Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called Russian Railroads. Uh, this is a game about well, building... Scoring points the <laughs> weirdest ways possible. <laughs> yeah, actually, we, we should be. This game is about building Russian railroads, kind of, sort of. But in essence, it is a game that is just about maximizing your points through various mathematical formulas. <laughs> but don't let that scare you away. There's a lot of cool pieces. It looks like a train game. Do we like it is what matters, and we'll tell you in a moment. The first thing I want to do in this game is show you the player boards because this is important to understand each round of the game you're going to score based on how these train pieces here are moved on your player board. You have uh, three black lines that you start the game with and over the course of the game you'll be moving these black lines different spaces forward on the different three different tracks that you have here. You have Moscow, uh, the Trans-Siberian track, you have Moscow to St. Petersburg, Moscow to Kiev. And then you have another track here with this purple marker here, kind of a factory track. And you'll be moving these three pieces. When you move this black piece and it gets to the number two spot on the Trans-Siberian, it unlocks three gray pieces that also show up on the tracks. And you'll be able to move these gray pieces, although they'll never be able to move past the black pieces. And when you move the black piece here up to the sixth spot, then brown pieces show up. And those, the brown line can never pass the gray line. And then when you move up to the number 10 spot, the top two things have a tan line show up, and if you move all the way to the 15 spot, the very top line has a white track that will move. And the reason you want to move these different tracks is because after each scoring round, you're going to look at the track and see how many points that track scores. The first thing you do is you look at the train that's attached to that track. Now each of the tracks can have one train attached to it. At the beginning of the game, you start with a one train, which isn't very useful, but as the game progresses, you'll be able to upgrade and you can even, the top one can have two trains. So this one will be six plus one. I might get an eight down here. And when I have that, that means I'm going to score that many spaces. So this one here, I would score seven spaces. I would score up to the seventh space. Each space scores equal to the points of the track piece that's on it. So this one here is tan. I would look up here, that's worth four points. So I'd get four points for that spot. The next two are considered to be brown because they're between the tan and the brown. So I would get two points for each of those. The next two are between the brown and the gray, so I'd get one point for each of those, and the black doesn't give me anything. In the second row, if I can get my gray piece up to this spot here, and my train reaches that far, then you notice there's a doubling tile here. Everything here is doubled. So this is a way to get extra points, especially if I get one of these higher ones. Also, if I get one of my pieces to the end here, I get a bonus of 10 points automatically. On the bottom row, you'll notice that many of these spots show the black train, and if I get the black train to, to one of these spots here, I get bonus points. Usually the black train scores me zero, but on the bottom track here, it can get me one, two, three, four bonus points. Or up here, it can get me 10 bonus points. Also, you'll notice that if I can get the brown train line plus the train here, I get an extra worker. If I get the black line all the way up to here, I get an extra worker. Then you'll notice that there's three spots here that I can, uh, if I get my black train, and if I get my black line there and the train up to that spot, I'm able to add a special ability to the board. These special abilities are several types. If I add this one, I can change the scoring of brown, tan, and white lines. So instead of being two, four, and seven, now they're three, six, and 10. Uh, another one allows me to add another space to the board, basically, where instead of having uh, instead of this being blank, if I can get my gray line up to this spot, it's an extra 20 points every turn. On the top here, I will be able over the course of the game to build doubling tiles, which will double the spaces one through eight. So I can get double points for all those. 
and one of the special things that you have is to be able to place three of those doubling tiles out on the board. Another one lets you move any four of your trains immediately. Another one allows you to put a second factory on the board. Now factories, let's talk about them. This is another line that you can move and have your pieces move along these factory lines. However, you notice between five points and ten points, there's a space here. All the trains in the game, you'll be able to flip them over and they become a factory, which completes this track. So as the game progresses, if I want to move farther to the higher points to score more points for this factory line, or if I have both of them on the board, I'm going to need to put these factories out here. Also, each factory, when you land on it, gives you a bonus for this one. This one, for example, gives you some two doubling tiles. This one here lets you move two pieces of any color forward two spots. So between each round, I'm going to basically look at the board, see how many points I score for all three lines and the factory line, and add them to my score. And after several rounds, whoever has the most points is the winner. Now let's talk about basic gameplay itself. Each player, each round is going to have five workers. And players are going to have pieces here to show what turn they go in. And on your turn, you're going to place one or more workers in one or more spots. Players are also going to have coins that they will get as the game goes by. They start with one, and you can use a coin as a worker. So for this spot, for example, is one worker, I could place a coin there instead of a worker. And some spots require coins. For example, this spot requires a coin and a worker. So what do the different spots do? Over here, it's pretty simple. Like you can see here, for example, I can spend one worker to move two of my black lines forward, or I could spend two to move three of them one forward. Like this means I can move one black line three forward, or I can move all three one forward, etc. And so I can move the black lines, gray lines, brown lines, tan lines, white lines, or I can move any two lines down here. And then here, you can always, this is the only spot where people can put multiple workers. Every time you put a guy here, you can move one of your black or gray lines one forward. Up here, if I want to go, if I want to change turn order, I can put one of my guys here. At the end of each round, whoever goes second, third, and fourth is going to get some bonus points for going last. Over here, I can take the, the lowest current engine or factory. So down here at the board, you have one through nine trains. So if there's any ones available, you take them first, then twos, and add those trains to your scoring tracks. Over here, I can place workers to move my factory line. And in the final row, I can put a worker to take a doubling tile, a worker to take two coins, or a worker to take two temporary workers that I can use this round. The game has some randomization with these engineers here. There's always two special spaces available. They do different things. For example, the one showing here lets you move your factory line and take three points, place a doubling tile and take three points. You can also pay a coin to buy an engineer. This engineer, when I take him, I put him in front of me. He lets me move my gray line and take five points. And he's now a space that only I can take. At the end of each round, I will place this engineer here for, per, you know, for buying purposes. This guy moves here, this guy moves here, and these three move over. And this is how you keep track of the rounds of how many engineers are left in the game. At the end of the game, there will be bonus scoring, and whoever has the most engineers is going to get 40 points, etc. Another thing that players can do, those little round tiles that give you special abilities, one of them lets you take one of these bonus cards at the top. And so the first person will have their choice of which five bonus cards they want. This one here gives you a free nine level train. This gives you a free engineer. Uh, this guy gives you a free black worker, so you'll have an extra worker. And you can always use this guy to move your tracks, the black line, forward an extra spot. Uh, this one gives you a doubling tile, move your black train, and move your factory once. Also, whenever you take one of these, you'll be able to go through a set of these bonus cards. And each of these bonus cards has different abilities that are worth points at the end of the game. For example, this one at the end of the game gives you six points for every engineer you have. This one gives you points for every doubling. If you have four more doubling tiles, you get 20 points. This one here gives you points equal to the length of all your trains. And so, you know, you have to pick one that you think will help you out and get you the most points at the end of the game. So at the end of the game, you'll take all the points that you've gotten over the course of the game, plus any for your secret bonus tile card that you might have grabbed, and whoever has the most points is the winner.
Now, on the surface, this is actually a game that I'm not a big fan of, usually, the, the style game, because I want a game that the theme matches. Hmm. And I think we need to be honest here, completely honest, and say that I don't think the theme exists almost at all. Mm -mm. There's the idea, I guess, of moving the, the, the different tracks down the... The different train pieces down the track, that it never feels like a train game. This is a game about scoring points. Yeah, I, I don't it. I don't know that you can go any way around that and say there's anything different than that. Nope. I mean every I mean this is uh there's three or four different ways you can score points. Uh, well, there's like that. twenty ways to score there's points, more right? Than that. I mean there's there's all there's there's so many ways to score points and they all have nice pictures on them. All you're doing is scoring points. You're not matching, you know, you're not carting a bunch of people from Moscow to Kiev or to, or from, you know, Vladivostok to uh, wherever. <laughs> uh, you're just not doing that. You're just trying to build a long train yeah, somewhere. Really, this could have been probably rethemed. So initially, that's something I'm not a big fan of. And probably if the theme had been stronger, I would have liked this game more. But as it is, I actually like the game quite a bit. And I and I, I have a hard time kind of guessing why, in a sense. I, maybe it's because I feel like the game is fascinating on the different things you can do every turn. You're a, you're a mathematician. You you live for this kind of stuff. Yeah, but not always though. I mean, some games are like ah, I don't feel like doing. And I don't feel like there's a lot of mathematical work here. You're just trying to. What, I think the way you play it is you look and say, ooh, that point scores a lot of that space scores me a lot of points. How do I get to that space? And then you play the next several rounds getting to that space, yeah. doing different things. And what the other players are doing on their boards doesn't really affect you it only affects you where they put their workers on the board which right. i will say for a worker placement game i felt more i can't believe you put that in that space i want to punch you in the nose moments in this game <laughs> than any other did you feel that at all yeah there's yeah. it seems like there's too few spaces in this no, game yeah there are it's like, ah. it's very few spaces right this is this is at uh, this is on the border of, of my two spectrums, of two of my spectrums, I'll put it that way. It is on the very top edge of, as far as brain burning equivalent, um, because I am not, I, I didn't understand how to score any of my railroads until maybe <laughs> yeah. the second to last turn in the game. I mean, really understand to where I could I could go and add it up myself without asking anybody, did I do this right? And I'm I'm sorry, I don't want to go through the whole game not really understanding how many or even how I'm getting those points. Well, I actually liked that aspect. I thought it was cool how the scoring was different and how there's these huge bonuses, but it takes a while to get to them. Yeah. I'm a big fan of worker placement games in, in general. Yeah, I mean, and I like this one where it took different amounts of workers and where coins were basically wild extra workers yeah, that could be put in different spots. Workers, yeah. I liked how the one track doesn't work unless you stuck places in it to continue along that track. Right. And I think the component quality for the, the game is or... really high. The component quality? Yeah, I think all the different pieces. I mean, at least, you know, I said the theme wasn't there, yeah. but moving those little train rails yeah. is better than moving cubes. That's true, yeah. They actually look like little uh, pieces of track, of railroad track. So, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll jump on that. And I think the art is good. I, I like the way the box looks. It has a good feel to it. I'm just saying that with all that cool theme, you know, it's not really in the game. No. But this is what I'll say. I actually really like this game. Now, before I, I get my final opinion, I will say I think there's one flaw. This is just my opinion, and I could be wrong. I think that there comes a point in the game where it's possible for several players to realize you're not going to win. Because every turn you're scoring points. So let's say Stam scores 20 points in the first turn, and I score 10. Then he scores 20, and I score 15. I'm catching up. Then he scores 25, and I score 20. You know, by turn four, I'm like, oh, you know what? He's so far ahead of me. That unless I pull off some miracle on the final turn and he plays stupidly, I can't win. Which is possible when I'm playing. Well, maybe. But this game doesn't have any sort of aha moments. Because you can see everything that's happened. You can see all the points everybody's going to get. There's no like, da-da-da-da, I pulled ahead with this card, this, this, and this. There's not a lot of secret things that happen. There's a few secret things, but yeah. not many. So I feel that 
because score is open during the whole game, you can kind of go, oh, not going to win That's, before the game's yeah. over. That's probably one of my strong points in the game, though. I I don't really like... I've been on the south end of... Oh, you mean where you thought you were winning? Those things where I'm like, okay, I've got this tied up, and then ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> I have this, and I beat you by one point. <laughs> I like that, actually. Oh, my word. That, <laughs> oh, that bugs me. That just really bugs me. But it's not that it's, you know, it, games like that don't aren't, aren't dead to me because of that. It's just I, I'd, I'd rather be able to have a very good feeling that either I'm doing well or I'm not doing well. Uh, just, just tell me up front. I'm fine with that. Don't uh, let me think I'm doing well and then go... All right. You're not. <laughs> well, for me, though, the final opinion on this is very good. Now, I would be interested, I think, to come back maybe in a year or two and see after 20, 30 plays see of this, is it still holding up? Because I wonder how many options there are over 10, 20, 30 games. Yeah. For now, it still is my interest. I'm like, oh, I'll try this. I'll try that. But I wonder. But, I mean, that's impossible to tell at this point in time. So I'm going to give this one one and a half train stacks up, maybe close to two, because I really like it. But, man, that lack of theme is like, eh. But I still love the mathematical flavor of it. I'm going to I'm gonna give this one caboose up because I like it. But if there's another worker placement game out there, I'd much rather play that. So this will make your top ten worker placements. No, not. It maybe could have. I mean, it's it's got... A little bit of freshness to it, but at the end of the day, it is just another worker placement game. Not that I mean that uh, in a very bad way. It's just it just didn't have the pop for me like like uh, other worker placement games have had. So uh, you got to you got to integrate the theme, and it just didn't happen. Also, play two games because your first game you're gonna lose. You're gonna, be, you're gonna <laughs> well, unless you're playing a whole bunch of other new people. You're gonna. Get <laughs> Game. You're just gonna, yeah, you're just going to be along for the ride. So you got you to get it a couple times. True, true. All right. So that's Russian Railroads. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.